Okay, guys, welcome back. It's ex it's grace, excuse, or remedy. We are on number 47. Yes, Pastor Dave's had a few things to say. We are only going to 77. Then we're going to start doing like a little Bible study my sister is uh, probably going to be interested in. All right, today we're going to do, I do not believe we've covered this, but only the Lord knows. It's the second letter of Peter, okay? And I'm hoping that, uh, because, again, I asked the Lord for these messages, guys, so we're going with faith, okay? We'll go with that. All right. Chapter, oh, by the way, before we do start, on uh, number 46, the camera was lagging a little bit. I have to apologize on 47. I'm hoping that won't happen again, but, you know, we have to upgrade. <laughs> All right, chapter one on Peter. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus the Christ, to them that have obtained the precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus the Christ. Now think about this, guys. Already I'm stopping. Says here, and we walk by faith. Uh, Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God. What's another way of saying that, guys? The grace of God. Might we? I'm very cautious with this because I do ask the Lord before I, I, I you know, I, I, I missed her. Um, so let's, let's try it this way, shall we? And I, and I do hope the grace of God is with Dave, you know? <laughs> So faith with us through the grace of God and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Righteousness comes by Christ and the Father. But righteousness is by faith in Christ who did pay the price so that we could be made the righteousness of God in Him. Basically, guys, when we're saved, a little, a little part of the Lord dwells in us. You do know that Jesus said that um, the five, when, when the best way to look at this is when he when Philip said to Jesus he says Lord show us the Father and we'll make do with that you know suffice us we'll make do with that and show us the Father and Jesus said to Philip he says Philip when you've seen me you've seen the Father when you've known me you've known the Father. Why is that? Because the Lord, the Father was dwelling in the Lord. And when he paid the price for sin, he took that sacrifice, which was himself, to the Father. The comforter that comes down is both the Son and the Father in the believer. That would be you, me, anyone who asks the Lord in through faith. And that is the secret that the prophets had that is also the manifold uh, secret and righteousness which is given through faith that's what Abraham received through faith it's it's much different than the law guys when you think about it okay in the law they would do the things the righteousness of the law they would do the right thing in other words the law was not made for somebody to do the, the you know the right thing the law was made for those that wouldn't and there was penalties involved. If you didn't do the right thing, you had to do this, you had to do that, you had to do this. But even if you did all that, you didn't become righteous by it. But here's the promise of God. The Lord says if you ask by faith for the Spirit of God, which is Christ and the Father in you through faith, then by faith you receive the Spirit of God first <laughs> yeah first and then what happens well you're so grateful that you want to do the right thing every day thereafter you don't want to mess up you want to go home am i right rick you want to go home someday now verse two okay Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. 
according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. What was it, guys? Pebbles and Rick. What was it that that woman who suffered for 12 years of an affliction that only women could probably understand and relate to, but for 12 years she had this. This issue that would not stop. She broke through them crowds, Rick. She broke through them crowds. And she said within herself, if I could just touch the hem of his robe, oh man, I'll be clean. She did. She was. That, that affliction dried up, stopped. What did the Lord say? He says, who touched me? And the reason he said that, he says, no, someone touched me because I felt virtue leave me. Yeah. Now listen up. You got to understand this, guys. According as his divine power hath given unto us all thanks. His divine power. His Holy Spirit has given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Look, guys, you can do this and that. We can do this and that. We can keep the customs. We can do little things, you know, and say it's a custom of ours to do this and do that and do this. It's like going to the assemblies of God, guys. We can go every Sunday, sit in the pews. We'll sing a few songs. We'll take the offering up. Okay? Got me so far? Sing another song or two. Talk about the bake sale. Coming up. Small sermon. And away we go out the doors. That ain't making you godly. It, it doesn't. A lot of people... Um, They'll spend their lives going to fellowships. And guys, I'm not throwing a stone at them. I wish I could find one to actually open the Bible. But they'll spend their time going to the fellowships every Sunday, every Sunday night, every Wednesday, devoted. Okay? Volunteer to clean the bathrooms. You know, I, I'm, I'm again, okay? I want to make sure I put that out there. That doesn't make it godly. Wait a minute now, Dave. What are you talking about? You can confess with, with your lips that the Lord's God, but and the Lord's the Lord, and you know what I mean? That doesn't make it godly. Well, pastor, are you really a pastor? Listen. Doing a group of things don't make you godly no more than did the law made you godly. You can do this and that and this and that and this and that and this and that. And they did. They even added some. It wasn't a good day for you if you were a chicken and laid an egg. They considered that work. <laughs> That's right. Some silly stuff, Lord knows. Huh? They added much more than what was there, guys. You know, Sabbath was made for you, not you for it. It's okay to do good on the Sabbath day. chicken dinner but listen up doing this doing that doing this doing that did not make you a Christian believing in the promise of God did it's by faith we receive the Holy Spirit it's by faith we walk in the newness of life it's by faith we do the law uh -uh. Uh, don't even go there guys Jesus didn't die to abolish the law. Jesus died to establish the magnified version of it. But doing it did not make you righteous. The Holy Spirit did. 
Now, I, I want to explain this as simple as you can. I know I've gone here on this issue, but this is probably one of the best issues that Scripture has to offer us. Guys, I know you may not want to hear this, but here it comes. The ark itself was not an holy object, guys. It was created from wood. A tree. It was sculpted. They made the poles for it. The Lord gave wisdom to the craftsmen. They plated it with gold in and out. And if the pictures I've seen online about what Ron Wyatt discovered are the actual, you know, 3D picture of what it would have been, it was beautiful. The two cherubim that was on the mercy seat, none of it was holy until the very presence that dwells in the believer's heart as Christians set on that mercy seat. On that mercy seat. Then it became so holy, you didn't touch it. If you weren't supposed to touch it, you didn't touch it. Now, I want you to try to understand this, guys. When that holy presence, I am flabbergasted by the glory of God. I mean, really? Oh. I would like to go and visit. Listen up. Once that presence dwelt on the mercy seat, same presence that dwelt in that tent in the tabernacle of the wilderness, two temples that were built, Solomon's and Herod's, and then the ultimate temple was the living God of Israel and his son, the Lord God, Jesus. When he went up, he sent the comforter down, Rick, by faith. And you receive it through faith. When you receive that, him, You've already received the gift of righteousness. You become the walking ark. The mercy seat, my friend. That's why I was trying to tell you in 46. Sorry about the mess up with the camera. Your mercy seat is your heart. What does the Lord sanctify then, Dave? Your soul. Where does it go after I die, Dave? You go home. You might have to go to sleep for a bit. But we all do. And I don't want to see anybody lost. Not one. Look guys. There probably have been a lot of people out there. Might have been a little offended by what Pastor Dave says. But Pastor Dave's just telling you the truth. I have nothing to gain guys. I do it for free. I don't have no overhead my rent stays the same every month. I don't have no big cameras or anything focused on a stage with a lot of people taping tapes. And my son's laptop. A missing key. And your pastor's in his socks in his living room. Preaching the good news. And happy to do it. We all have our portions. Come on. And Rick, in case you're saying, well, Dave, after I met the Lord and he filled me up with the Holy Presence and I know I'm going home afterwards, what do, you, what do I do? What do I do? I'll tell you what you do. You give your wife a hug. Come on. You can do it. The wife of your youth gave you those children. Cried many of tears. Praise for you. Build up that pantry. Because you might have an opportunity, Rick, to help somebody that doesn't have enough food. 
and you can be the elder of your very own home. The example. You don't think the Lord's going to bless you? Look, it's the Holy Spirit that saves you, my friend, but the works are going to follow you. That's right. God gives you works to do. You don't have to be on a, you know, I'm called to preach, okay? I'm going to India. Pray for your brother-in-law. You know what I mean? Because I'm praying for you. At least I'm going to now. You know what I mean? I try to remember. But come on. You can do this. Not you, but the grace of God that comes down from above. When you ask, Rick, be prepared. You better hold on to something. The Holy Spirit comes down. He's going he's gonna to make himself known, Rick. Don't be afraid. Well, how will I know, Dave? Well, there is something called the peace of God. When the peace of God comes upon you, I'm talking to anybody out there, guys. When the Holy Spirit, oh man, comes upon you, no, you're going to know it. Well, how is it, Dave? I mean, you just feel like, uh, no. Not as the world gives, do I give unto you, the Lord says. Not like the world. Not like, oh man, the bills are paid this month. Oh my goodness. No. Not, oh man, the wife finally turned the heat down. I was roasting in here. No. The peace of God comes down from above. It's easily entreated. In other words, it's easily received. You know, the Lord and the Father is coming down. He sanctifies the vessel from the belly to the heart. You feel the peace of God. You'll know you have met the Lord. And when you do, Rick, and don't wait. Don't worry about the denominations around the world. Worry about opening your Bible, at least to Matthew. Read up. Be versed. I'm going to pray for you that the temptations and the troubles that afflict the flesh that the enemy is all too familiar with that we'll use against the new believers. The Lord will spare you. And you walk in newness. You do the right thing every day. Give your wife a hug. Every day. Pray with her every day. Your prayers will be more betterly. You know, a double knot, a double cord is stronger than a single cord. So pray together. It's stronger. Ask the Lord to see you through the day to direct your paths and your foot steps be a blessing to anyone if you can be a blessing be a blessing to people let the lord direct you in that area i'm just an old pastor in his socks okay now let's go on called us unto glory and virtue remember the unrighteousness will not enter into the kingdom of heaven listen in other words this applies to everybody whether you were a fornicator a liar a thief you blasphemed your parents. You were covetous. You were proud. You were boasters. You were adulterers. You were adulteresses. Homosexually feminine. Lesbians. It doesn't make a difference in the Lord's sight. A kidnapper. All are the same as one. That's right. And that is the truth. All. You ever heard the little story? Well, it's just a little white lie. Who's going to know? Well, tell you who's going to know. It's the same thing as if you went and you took somebody's life. No liar goes to heaven. So what do you do? When you ask the Lord into your heart, ask him to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And Rick, I'm serious. From the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Cause you to do the right thing. Inherit the kingdom of the living God of Israel and his son Jesus. Who died for you. Don't worry about the sect, you know, S-E-C-T's, what they're preaching. 
What you <laughs> worry about, open your Bible. Ask the Lord to show you the truths. Don't rely on somebody else to tell it to you. That includes Pastor Dave. Get into those scriptures. Learn. He passed one bread, guys. He broke just one. He passed one cup. That cup represents the new covenant, the things he said to do. He says, if you love me, do what I've said. If you're my friend, Rick, do what I said. If you're my brother, Rick, do what I said. And if you do, there's going to be a way opening up that you won't be able to comprehend. And the new place that we go, you know the way, Rick. Jesus is the way. Once you believe by faith, you walk in faith. Don't do the things that you used to do before. That's casting off the deeds of the flesh. You don't want anything to do with that. That nastiness is burning up with the earth. Put on Christ. Do the right thing. Be a good neighbor. You don't have to go into the missions field at your age or with health problems. He's asking you to be the missionary of your own home. Be an example to your family. Be there. Be obedient to the faith. Do the right thing. That's all he's asking you to do. That's all he really asks anyone to do. If you have a call on your life, Rick, when the Lord saves you, he makes his self known, the holy presence of the living God of Israel and his son Jesus in your heart. You ask what you're supposed to do. You may be one that can minister to others in your situation. You can bring others to Christ by your own testimony. I'm encouraging you, truly. Okay? Now listen up. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of his what? What? Of his divine nature. Now how do you think we're supposed to put on Christ or be partakers of that divine nature? It's through the very spirit of God, the very grace of God that come from above in us the hope of glory. We're putting him on day by day, guys. Day by day. As a matter of fact, when you go into that little room off the side, you want some quiet time with the Lord. Did you know by looking up, what did the Lord say? Look up, your redemption draw at night. Look up. For that's where paradise is. You may not see it, but it's there. By glory to glory. By his glory, we're changed day to day. We are changed, guys. Embrace that. Okay? Having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Being escaped from the corruption. By putting on Christ, you're crucifying the flesh. You're pinning it to that very same cross through Christ. He'll give you the ability to cast off the deeds of the flesh. To don't do the things you used to do anymore. You know what I mean? Besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance. These are things, guys, that, bro, hey, Pastor Dave here, go through the same thing every day, day by day. And to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. There might be some times I might be talking to a few people who just became Christians. You might be going through some stuff. Yeah, Dave, I don't know what it is, but lately, boom, boom, boom. It's like I'm getting people jabbing at me from left, from right. I've got everybody and his brother after me, and everybody's mad at me, Dave. Everything that could go wrong is going wrong. I'm having real bad dreams. What do I do? Well, first you got to understand where that stuff's coming from. There's one individual in particular and his dominion that ain't happy because you decided the right decision and you asked the Lord into your heart and saved you. So he's ticked off. Might I share? So he might 
whisper in your ear, accuse you of this, accuse you of that, say, oh, you know what you did. Or something to the effect, and this is one of my favorite sayings, the Lord don't want you. No, he does not want you. As a matter of fact, I have this on good authority. That's right. He said he never wanted you. Where you got that idea, he does not know. But he sent us to tag and bag Jew. That's right. Personally, he sent us. Now pack up. It's time to go. I don't think so. You know what I mean? And that's what motivates Pastor Dave. Because I love the Lord Jesus with all my heart, my soul, my strength, with all my mind, with all my might. And it may be a process, Rick and any other person out there. Come on. But let me explain this to you. We're going back to Egypt. Oh, no, we ain't, Dave. Yes, we are. Let me explain something. Picture yourself in Egypt. You're probably saying, I'd like to picture myself anywhere else, but here right now. No, listen. Picture yourself in Egypt. Let's call Pharaoh, I don't know, the devil. Okay? Taskmasters could be, I don't know, some creepy things walking around back then, guys. Look at some of the videos. We'll just call them regular Pharaohites, okay? They're beating on everybody. They're not happy with anyone. They like their images big. There's another story about that. We won't go there. Okay. Um... And then, after 400 and so years, Lord knoweth, there arose Moses. Let me tell you something, okay, guys? I owe Moses a big apology. You know, sometimes we just have to learn our lessons the hard way. And Brother Dave here, oh man, I found out I ain't Moses. <laughs> I'm an old guy in my socks preaching and I'm happy about it okay guys come on anyway out they come because Moses was sent he was 80 years old well first he was 40 in Egypt when he saw somebody misusing one of his uh, Hebrew brothers and um, temperament got the better part of him he didn't know the Lord yet and he killed the Egyptian. Right? Buried him in the sand. But you didn't know that, hey Rick? Yeah. Sometimes. Now Moses couldn't have known. Remember, Moses was a prince of Egypt. Raised up. By Pharaoh's daughter. I do believe it was Pharaoh's daughter. So he was, you know, kingly type. He was a prince of Egypt. Right? Yet he killed an Egyptian for harming one of his brothers. Now, for, for anybody who goes there, by the way, Old Testament, New Testament, we don't even hate our enemies. Okay? Story. Now, the next day comes around, and it's pretty much the same situation, but this time it was two brethren fighting with each other. So Moses came up to him and says, guys, guys, what are you doing? You're brothers. You shouldn't be fighting one another. And then one of them, the one that was not nice, said, what are you going to do? You're going to kill us like you did the Egyptian? Now Moses immediately knew this thing was known, right? What would you do when the decree for killing an Egyptian was death? Even if you were an Egyptian, he was won by, by uh, you know, he was raised by Pharaoh's daughter, I guess. He was a prince of Egypt. So when Moses found out this thing, he left. Lickety split. Went through the desert. Got to the land of Midian. Jethro, his father-in-law. He was 40 years old when he fled Egypt. And 40 years went past. He had a family couple of sons and then one day guys out of the blue 
Moses sees this this bush burning that wasn't burning. And then he goes up and God calls him and says, you're going back to Egypt. I want you to lead out a nation. No matter how old you are, no matter where you've been, whether you're rich or poor, bond or free, everybody has to first come before the Lord. Moses was saved that very day. He was filled with the Holy Spirit that very moment. And he was sent as a shepherd. Once the Lord leads you out of Egypt, though, guys, you stay out of Egypt. Don't go back. Don't long for the melons or the onions or the leeks. Now, the thing is, during all the times of the miracles, the 10 miracles that were shown, even as much as raising the Red Sea on either side to get through that narrow way to the Holy Land. Yet all this below God's mouth, they decided to go back to Egypt by way of building altars and vanities like a golden calf after the Lord had proved time and time again how much he loved them. He fed them. Their shoes never got old. They, they were cared for. Manna came down, rained all over the desert. They made bread with it. They ate it for 40 years. Quail. But they never entered into the promised land because they didn't believe that they could. After everything the Lord did, after every miracle, after every time he proved to them, has there been anybody else other than God that could set a, a entire nation free like they did for Israel the Hebrew nation and brought them out and even when Pharaoh sought to to bring them back in chains or kill them it was that army that perished not God's because they were led out by a shepherd but they didn't inherit the promise from that shepherd because they didn't believe it was possible to enter into that promise by that shepherd. And what did Moses say? God's going to raise you up a shepherd just like me. Only him you better obey and believe when he says something and do it. He won't spare the rod. So when Moses, being that shepherd of that time, led the Hebrew nation out of Egypt and through that desert, through those storms, into the very promised land, at least below the mountain of God, they repaid him by going back to the pagan ways, going back to the things they were supposed to be redeemed from. Hence, when Moses came down after receiving the commandments of God for 40 days, he was up there and 40 nights. What did he see? Well, he first saw God's heart broke. Because the very nation he brought out, because he promised his friends he would, were carrying around, fornicating, half naked, running around a golden calf. And saying, this be our God that drove us, that pulled us out of Egypt. He hurt the Lord. They hurt the Lord. Moses stood in the gap. He said, please don't do it. Because God would have wiped them out. Moses stood in the gap. He says, please don't, don't do that. Because if you, if you do that, if you do that, Father, what's going to happen is the Egyptians are going to say, you couldn't control this people. So you wiped them out. That you brought them out just to die in that land. So the Lord spared them for Moses' sake. 
and for his own righteousness sake because he's mercy but the very people that didn't believe him died in the desert every one of them in the space of 40 years because they did not believe that God actually would give them the promise now at that time it was all the circumcised that came out of Egypt hence the Israeli nation today just like that time Jesus went to his own the circumcised and they refused him too but go back to Egypt again it was the children of the circumcised that had not been circumcised that entered into the promise and obtained those promises because they believed the living God of Israel and his servant Moses hence I turn to the Gentiles and they shall believe and that's exactly what happened when Jesus sent Paul the Apostle they received and I'm one of them guys we have to believe the promise the promise is the gift of the Holy Spirit comes down from the father of all good things guys the fruits of righteousness the love the peace the kindness the gentleness temperance patience faith but above all faith and they go hand in hand with love without faith you can't enter into those promises you have to believe first that those promises exist and in this case guys we have to believe that there's a shepherd up there the high priest of our faith which is Jesus himself that resides in the very throne room of the living God of Israel friends of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob King David who loved him so Moses best friend and Jesus is saying to every single soul that's on this planet if you ask I will give you the Holy Spirit and through faith you will inherit the very glory I died to give you not because we deserved it not because you can earn it but because he wants you to have it why he wants to bring it back to the garden guys there were some angels that made a really terrible mistake I'm sure there was crying in that day but the angels made a mistake and they could not go back what they gave up paradise for was the very things that we got to say get away from me that's the things of the flesh what they turned away from was the things that we renounce in Jesus name the things of the flesh and why because the very things that they left paradise to come down here for we want to leave this stuff behind leave this earth and go to paradise hence for a short time the halls of heaven were a little quieter the choirs, the choirs a little more soft did they sing but you know what the good news is very shortly as the stars are in heaven as the sand on this earth God's gonna raise up a whole lot of angels and the halls will be noisy once again with gladness with joy with praise music I don't know if there's a choir up there but I'd sure like to know and we're not going to remember the nastiness that was on this earth you won't remember this why because he promised that new bodies 
It won't hurt no more, guys, Rick. You won't feel the pain no more. Brother Dave will be able to see and not worry about the arthritis hurting so bad that you can't sleep at night. Or the discs that burn. But the very thing that God gave through faith to Abraham, he's given to every single human being that hears his voice. Don't harden your hearts like the children of Israel did when they came out of the desert. When they were right within grasp of the promises. And at the very last minute, they turned away. <clears throat> Reach in faith towards that prize that God is holding out through his son for a spot in those halls of holiness. Vineyards as far as the eye can see, guys. But you got to have faith. Without it, you can't please God. You're going to go through some rough times, guys. I don't know about other pastors and how they preach, but I'm not going to tell you something ain't so. You're going to have days when you wake up and every part of your body hurts. You won't be able to see right. You won't be able to speak right. You won't sleep well at night. You have terrible nightmares. We all know where that comes from. You know what I mean? And then when you least expect it, guys, might I share? Well, they you're having no problem right now. I was sitting over there on the couch before I even stood up. And the presence of a living God of Israel and his son, my bud, and I'm telling you this in love, he is my buddy. He's everybody's buddy. Brothers, upon my head came a blessing. My heart got all peaceful. And I knew it was time to preach the message. But you know what he really wants to preach, guys? He wants you to know his arms are out there, guys, because the time is coming. Gee whiz, guys, it's so close. Rick, hear my voice here. The Lord's getting ready to roll up the heavens. It's going to be scrolled away soon. The very trumpets, the vials, the bowls, the seals. All of them are going to be poured out soon. And Rick, you just got to look. The machines are out there. You won't be able to run. The Lord said you don't need to. Put your trust in Him. Ask Him into your heart. Because He doesn't want anybody lost. And I've done my best in two tapes to try to convince you of that. And I hope that at least maybe it'll give you pause to say, well, you know, I, I like to have a talk with the Lord. Just, just see if any of this might be so. Talk to your wife. And everybody out there, it may look grim right now. Might look a little tough. You might not understand a lot of things. <clears throat> and the saddest thing is, guys, we don't got the apostles anymore. You ever notice that? Anyone? There are apostles. Where are they? Where are all of our prophets? Where are the ones that uh, should know these things? Guys, the time is already almost gone. The night is upon this planet and pretty soon it's going to be dark. So I'm asking everybody to open their eyes up. Ask the Lord to do that. Show you what's going on. Guys, you may not know this, but YouTube is really, if you need to know some certain things, there are credible sites to go through. Really to give you an idea of what's really what's going on. China and Russia and Iran are out there. 
We're just two clicks away from something far worse than the 62 troubles of October. Rick would know. We're at DEF CON 3 already. And as Rick should know, there's only two superpowers with a limited amount of arms in 62. But today, it wouldn't take much for a powder keg to go off. I do believe that the first seal is opened and it could happen any time. So what we got to do, Rick, and any other person out there that ever calls out to the name of the Lord Jesus, when you do, in faith, you receive the Holy Spirit, that makes you brother. And I speak to all the brothers in Christ out there, start building up a little grain, guys. And... Start building up a little extra for your neighbor. Because if you don't, it could get real bad. With that, guys, I would like to tell you that in tape number um, 48, we're going to start back up on Peter. Um, sometimes this happens. I'll just get sidetracked and have to share. And But I will finish the book of Peter. I do hope you guys have a blessed evening. I ask that the grace of God be upon and within each person in sincerity that asks for the Lord in their heart. I do ask that he direct your way and cause you not to stumble or fall, that the, the enemy would be rebuked in every ear that ever heard this message and that the grace of God would keep you safe until the day that his son comes back the same way, guys, he left on a cloud, the promise. With that, I give thanks that you listened today, and I hope everything goes well for you. May the grace of God be with you. Amen.